Hello and welcome to our daily reflection for Monday the 21st of September. As we continue in the book of Acts, Paul is on his second missionary journey and it's not without its challenges. Um, he's just left Lystra, um, that was from Saturday's reading, and now I'm going to read from Acts 16, 6 to 25. They went to Phrygia and then on through the region of Galatia. Their plan was to turn west into Asia province, but the Holy Spirit blocked that route. So they went to Mycenae and tried to go north to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't let them go there either. Proceeding on through Mycenae, they went down to the seaport of Troas. That night, Paul had a dream. A Macedonian stood on the far shore and called across the sea, Come over to Macedonia and help us. The dream gave Paul his map. We went to work at once, getting things ready to cross over to Macedonia. All the pieces had come together. We knew now for sure that God had called us to preach the good news to the Europeans. Putting out from the harbour at Troas, we made, straight, made a straight run for Samothrace. The next day we tied up at New City and walked from there to Philippi, the main city in that part of Macedonia, and even more importantly a Roman colony, and we lingered there for several days. On the Sabbath, we left the city and went down along the river where we had heard there was to be a prayer meeting. We took our place with the women who had gathered there and talked with them. One woman, Lydia, was from Thyatira and a dealer in expensive textiles known to be a God-fearing woman. She listened with intensity to what was being said. The master gave her a trusting heart and she believed. After she was baptised, along with everyone in her household, she said in a surge of hospitality, If you're confident that I'm in with you, I'm in this with you, and believe in the Master truly, come home with me and be my guest. We hesitated, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. One day, on our way to the place of prayer, a slave girl ran into us. She was a psychic and with her fortune telling made a lot of money for the people who owned her. She started following Paul around, calling everyone's attention to us by yelling out, These men are working for the Most High God. They're laying out the road of salvation for you. She did this for a number of days until Paul, finally fed up with her, turned and commanded that the spirit that possessed her, out in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of her and it was gone just like that when her owners saw that their lucrative little business was suddenly bankrupt they went after Paul and Silas roughed them up and dragged them into the market square then the police arrested them and pulled them into a court with the accusation these men are disturbing the peace dangerous Jewish agitators subverting our Roman law and order by this time, the crowd had turned into a restless mob out for blood. The judges went along with the mob, had Paul and Silas' clothes ripped off and ordered a public beating. After beating them black and blue, they threw them into jail, telling the jailkeeper to put them under heavy guard so there would be no chance of escape. He did just that, threw them into the maximum security cell in the jail and clamped leg irons on them. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing a robust hymn to God. The other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is said that Paul almost single-handedly spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. And in this passage we read today, Paul went into Macedonia, modern day Greece, Europe. So I want to thank Paul for obeying that vision of from God, because that was the beginning of Christianity in Europe. It seems strange, God, 
that God forbid Paul to preach in Asia. However, it's worth noting it's not Asia as we know it today, the Far East, but a Roman province, which is modern day Turkey. David Livingstone wanted to go to China, but God sent him to Africa. William Carey wanted to go to Polynesia, but God sent him to India. C.S. Lewis wrote this. There are two kinds of people. Those who say, thy will be done. And those to whom God says, all right then, have it your own way. So Paul continued to the towns he had visited about five years before. And the church was becoming stronger and increasing in numbers. Increasing daily, it says. So God's plan was coming to fruition. Then they finally arrived in Troas. But this was not God, Paul's plan. No sat nav then. Just GPS. God, uh, God's plan spiritually. Spiritually speaking through a dream. It was a dream that gave Paul a map. His team didn't hesitate to follow Paul because he'd proved that he was a strong and godly man leading a strong and godly team. In Philippians 3 verse 13 it says this Paul says this I am focusing all my energies on this one thing forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead the wisdom of God's plan was beginning to unfold he wanted Paul to reach this a continent to win for Jesus Christ it took two days to sail to the mainland and then a walk to Philippi to reach to reach this important place which is where armies of Mark Antony and the Octavian and Octavian defeated Brutus and Cassius in a decisive battle of the Second Roman Civil War in 42 BC and so many Roman soldiers had retired there so it was quite an important place Paul followed a plan to plant churches in major cities and he knew it was easier for the gospel to be spread from these cities rather than to these cities. There was no synagogue in Philippi, which meant there wasn't even 10 Jewish men there because that what was needed to, um, to set up a synagogue. Women didn't count. So they went to a place by the river where people were praying and that's when they met Lydia. Lydia has the honour of being the first recorded European to convert to Christianity. She was originally from an important commercial city, Thyatira, in what is now Turkey. She was a dealer in, of purple fabrics, which were used for expensive robes. After God opened Lydia's heart and she was baptised, she opened her home and it became the central base for Paul's work in Philippi. Which seems ironic really because Lydia was from the area that God had forbidden Paul to go to. But later there was a church in Thyatira. It is mentioned in Revelations as one of the seven churches. Hospitality is a gift and she used it abundantly. She is a good example to us all. It all seemed to be going quite well until the demon-possessed girl. This girl was giving free advertising for Paul's mission, but he didn't appreciate the source of this recommendation and didn't need demonic approval of his work. So he got fed up with her after a few days and commanded the demon out of her. Paul was careful to speak to demons only in the authority of Jesus Christ. And he spoke beyond the afflicted girl to the demon itself. Out in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of her. And it left her. Not everyone was happy about that though, as she made money for her masters that were like pimps uh, prostituting her spirituality. Seeing their income vanished, they attacked them viciously. The Roman Empire law was split into two one for citizens and one for those who were not. Well, they assumed that Paul and Silas weren't Roman citizens because of their Jewish appearance. 
they class them as Jewish agitators. Now we know the Romans were barbaric and had no limits on beating as the Jewish law did. One could only receive a maximum number of flows in Jewish law. They were severely beaten and thrown into prison. But wait, though they were arrested, beaten and prisoned for doing good, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. The other prisoners must have wondered who these men were. They had probably never seen anything like it. What a witness to Jesus Christ, the risen King. Anyone can be happy in pleasant circumstances, but real joy comes from within. And Paul and Silas knew God was with them. So instead of cursing, they blessed God. Can we learn a lesson from Paul and Silas? What can we learn? What we can learn from today's reading is God is in charge. He has a plan for all of us. It might not be all plain sailing and there will be difficulties along the way. In Jeremiah it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen.